In my previous video, I explained about creating alerts, webhooks and storing data in Google Sheets from the TradingView live data feed. This video will show you how to create custom alerts, which then can be used as feed to the Google Sheet through API server. Then we'll show you how to create a screener data, which can mix all market data, default technical indicators, and custom indicators, strategy data to find your best trade. TradingView provides screeners, and the options are huge as well. But, if you search the fields which you can screen based on, they are just the default ones supported by the TradingView itself. If you search for MACD, it just shows one. If you search for RSI, it shows three of them. But, let's go to the indicators which are a full list published by anyone. If you search similarly for RSI and MACD here, we could see pages of indicators available, which most of you might be using. It will be great if we can use these data also as part of your screener, right? Let me show you how to get that done. But I would recommend watching my previous videos, since this video is based on assumptions and might not be going through in depth on certain areas. I will quickly walk through how to create an alert, using existing default code behavior, on any indicator, then show what's the limitations so you can co-relate them, and can add more capabilities with slight modifications. Let me create an alert with the Hiken Ashi, then select a condition which will always satisfy, and send an alert every bar close with a set of data. This was already explained in a previous video. But, if you tried to send some dynamic data in the alert message, the options are very limited. And also, you have to copy-paste this JSON format, and conditions for every ticker symbol you want to track, it's going to be a time-consuming job, if your trading set is different every week, which typically will be for most traders. Now, you have some basic ideas on the alert creation. I'll walk you through creating a Google Sheets table for stock market info. The first five columns gather stock prices using Google Finance with just a ticker symbol. The next two hold regular indicators, which you can calculate or find elsewhere, and the final two feature special TradingView indicators. Setting up is simple. Put the ticker in column 1, use Google Finance for columns 2 to 6, and replicate for all stocks. Give the columns different colors to differentiate. Now let's see how to get the second set. Three ways you can collect them. Use the Pine script itself, then use the TradingView library to generate them or, use the backend API server to generate them using Python technical analysis lib. Or, use Google App Script itself, but there are no libraries and you have to write them raw. Here, I will show you how to use the Pine Script itself, which is pretty simple. Open the Pine Script editor, and create an indicator with some title, and a short title, which will appear in the chart as well as alert dropdown. Now, we need three indicators which are standard indicators to fill the Google Sheet. TradingView provides technical analysis libraries and those indicators are available as functions. Let's get the RSI first, setting it to 14 length. For the MACD, I am just getting the signal line. It returns all three data points needed for MACD though. Then, let's get the 9 EMA. Okay, now we have all three signals we want. We need to construct the data in JSON format to be sent to the backend API server through alert. I have provided here a sample pine function which can be used for constructing JSON. This JSON builder also includes the ticker symbol and alert type. You can add all the static data which you want here. This is the best part about adding all the info in the alert itself, so you don't need to configure them for every ticker symbol. Now you have the JSON data, all you need to do is raise an alert here with the JSON data and set the alert to be sent at every bar close. Save the script and add it to the chart for it to activate. Oh, it seems like I have some syntax issues. Okay, fixed it and now add it to the chart. Let's now create an alert. Now, if you see you got this new indicator here which you created. The best part here as I said is, you don't need to configure the alert message with dynamic JSON data. The data is already packed in the indicator itself. Have to wait for the bar to close. Okay, we got the alert here. We have all the data we want. Here, I am also showing the data received on the backend. If you have not watched my video about setting about the API server, please look into the video in my channel. The third set of data is the existing published indicator data. Let's take one indicator here. I am selecting this Laguerre RSI. Open the source code of this indicator, and if you scroll to the bottom of the code, you will see two alert conditions, this is the trigger condition. When you create an alert for this indicator, you will see those two trigger conditions and the message contains some static string but, you are not getting any access to the current value itself. But, here our interest is to get the current value generated by this custom indicator. So, how do you get those? We can't edit the code directly. 
you have to make a working copy of this and edit. Just note, this is the copyright code of someone. You can make a local copy, edit and use it for your own purpose, but can't redistribute. Here, I am going to use alert, similar to the previous standard indicator, but use the variables from the code, convert them to string and pass it along. You can build the whole JSON format like the previous one, but showing the sample here. Now, save the file in your local name. One thing to note here is, the alert does not work with a time frame or time gap options. If the study or indicator has those, you will have to remove them. Here, I am just changing the title and short title, so I can differentiate mine and the published one. Now, you can see this alert showing up. Still, you will have those triggers also, since we did not remove them. Now, we wait for the bar to close and here we can see both the previous one and the current alerts are showing up with their values. Finally we have collected all the data that we want and sent it to the backend API server. Which in turn will send it to the Google Sheet. The Google Sheet now has all the data that we want and you can now apply the filter. Since Google Sheet has lots of filter options like numeric range, text match etc on data from multiple sources, you can use this as a best screener you would possibly not see anyone providing this level of flexibility. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you, see you in another video.